Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. So on the day I met Aida and Majida at the Azraq refugee camp in northern Jordan, I also met 16-year-old Hussam. Hi. John, how are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Hussam is a truly extraordinary kid who lives with his mother and younger brother in a shelter with very little furniture except a bookshelf, which contains the Quran and a couple other books. I began by asking Hussam how he learned to speak English. Actually, I learned here in the camp. You learned in the camp? Yeah, three months of our study. Three months? I downloaded some videos from YouTube. And I learned, I learned speaking, listening. That's right, he learned from YouTube. Well, and he works with a tutor who's also a Syrian refugee. I go to him every day, every day, nightly, uh, in the morning, uh, when I have a free time, just go to him and say, hey, teach me English. He has two accents. American and Britain. <laughs> Rosiana and I are laughing because for both of us, that's one more accent than we have. Hussam also studied English a little bit back in Syria. In fact, he was in English class when his school was bombed. Suddenly we heard the English teacher shouting, lay down. And all the students were laying in the ground. So just our plan. Uh, shelled the school with missiles, and many students with my friends died and injured. The girls was crying, and uh, I have my friends who died. Said Sultan Al Ghanim his name, and actually, it was a terrible. Yeah, it was terrible. So. And I can see that you think about your friend often. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I will show my his photos and the school. So, yeah, can you show me? Yeah. This happened to me often in Jordan. The refugees I met almost never had printed photographs. Instead, their pictures of friends and family were on phones. Sometimes on non-functioning phones, they kept charged only to access the pictures. Hussam first showed me a picture of blood on the floor of his classroom, and then he showed me his only picture of his friend. It was of a teen boy's corpse, his dead eyes staring up at the camera. I asked him if this is why his family had left Syria. Yeah, this moment. They said, no school. No working, no life, see it wasn't safe, so we should go to Jordan to reset a better life. But since then, Hussam's family has spread out. I have three parts of my family, one in Syria and one in Germany, and we are here, and actually I have my brother in Turkey. His brother in Turkey is on scholarship at university, he has two married sisters still in Syria, and his father, an engineer and older brother, took the boats to cross into Europe more than a year ago. Hussam, his mother, and younger brother are hoping to be allowed to reunite with them soon in Germany. Hussam seems to genuinely love learning. He's a very successful 10th grader at the refugee camp's high school. He also loves writing stories. I like to write uh, adventure stories, so somebody who who lost in the forest mm -hmm. and he's like found some something in the night and he's like, I can't write, so I like it. But when I asked him if he wanted to be a writer or a translator when he grew up, he said no. I have to be a petrol engineer like my father was in Germany to finish my study. When I finished, I go to a company in Syria which helps the Syrian uh, people in Syria. And to help rebuild it, that would be your dream? Yeah, rebuild it. It's my dream, actually. Syria, it's my country and it's the green country. I love it. So much. This young man has not seen his father, his sisters, or two of his brothers in more than a year, and he knows that they can only be reunited in a safe, peaceful Syria. And that is his dream, to rebuild that country. Hussam also loves to sing. In fact, he sang for us about Syria while his mother wept. <laughs> And so this young singer and writer will hopefully one day soon be an engineer. And I really admire that professional goal. Hussam is a brilliant and tremendously disciplined kid. I mean, he learned English in three months. He could do anything. But his greatest ambition is to bring his talents to the kind of work his country will need the most. And to me, that's true heroism. Godspeed, Hussam. May your dreams come true. May you be a soldier in the army of engineers that rebuilds your country. Hank, I'll see you on Friday. وعيني حزينة حدها النوم من حرقة الواجد سليانة